boy Dutch the Damon and you now watching Damon Time with Dutch. On today's episode of Prison Stories Uncovered, we over these Baltimore and them real trenches. But before I hop off in the storytelling mode, I want to send a big shout out to the brother Edward Wright. This brother sends hard earned money and bless the channel through cash. Yeah, can't appreciate you enough, pimp. Edward Wright, just stay locked in, pimp. I got us. Now that we got that out the way, let's get it. Meanwhile, down the hospital, Ike Man baby mother, Marissa, she get off the elevator with tears in her eyes. She never seen Ike Man look so helpless. This was her Superman. And to see him laid up with a shit bag on him. Bullets holes all in him. Shit that's broke her heart. They had been together forever. She had been preaching to him that they need to leave Baltimore. Get out of Baltimore. But it's hard to convince a city nigga to get out the city. But look at the outcome. Now shit gonna be different forever. If only he would've listened, he wouldn't be in this predicament. But anyway, she leave out the front entrance of the hospital. Walk through the parking lot towards her car. Now it's a pain. Now, it's a black conversion van parked right next to her car that wasn't parked there before. But in her time of grief, that shit was invisible to her. So as she walked up to her car and stick her key in the door, the sliding door to the van just slide open. <laughs> Four fingers hop out, throw her in the L. She reached down in her left pocket and whip out the pepper spray. Death start going crazy with that motherfucker spraying that bitch. As a natural reflex, Four fingers let her go. She yank away and try to run back through the parking lot. But the other good brother, Akwu, that was in the van with four fingers, he hopped out with the 40 cal, dropped down in the military stance, hit her in the back of her head, boom, flipped her in the parking lot, knocked our brains out our face, four fingers standing there holding his face screaming. Conrad Akwu push her in the van, then hopped in behind him, they peel off, skirt, out the hospital parking lot. She laid out a few feet away from her car, out of there. They left her a mess. Police had the hospital taped off. That shit was all over Channel 13 News. I knew man was going through it. By the time Mr. Fletcher got down there, he was already talking crazy. I was hanging it up. And for the comrades that came back like that, that fast, Mr. Fletcher was mind blown. Cause now he thinking like, who the fuck we up against here? Cause it seemed like every time they hit, they get hit back twice as hard. They been taking major loss after major loss. Even after them boys chopped that frugal down, they ain't simmer down none. So Mr. Fletcher like, man, these niggas wanna play dirty. Then they really embarrassed the hood, had Jefferson Street all on the news, all shot up, people laid it all out in the middle of the street type shit. Really embarrassed the hood. So you already know revenge is a dish best served cold. And with Lil' Molly being locked up, that shit made shit worse, cause that's one of their shooters gone. They tried to bail him out, but he had a probation hold, they no bailed him. But Mr. Fletcher tell Ike man like, look, don't even worry about that nephew. I'm back all the time and I'm staying on that business. This our family, man. Them niggas ain't gonna play our family, man. They don't want you fall with your baby mother, man. Little Marley, baby mother, man. I'm out here, big on out here here first, nephew. He whip out in the hospital, show him the that's legal. I'm like, man, I don't leave no survivors. He get Ike man to file, rub his head, tell him to keep your head up and your chest out. We gonna come out on top. Ike Man didn't even respond, he just stirred off in the distance. Knowing he couldn't get about that hospital bed and do a damn thing. Tubes and shit all in him. And he gets some news like this. His baby mother get killed coming to see him. Mr. Fletcher go to leave out the hospital room. He walks right in to see plainclothesmen detectives who was entering the room to see Ike Man. He quickly brushed past him, avoiding the eye contact. But both of the detectives stopped and stirred at him because he had been on their board that very morning. When they did roll call, the shift commander had built a pyramid of pictures on the chalkboard. And Mr. Fletcher's picture was at the top of that pyramid. So the detectives knew very well who Mr. Fletcher was. He was very much under investigation in the Jefferson Street indictment they was working on. But anyway, not expecting to see Mr. Fletcher there, they made a mental note of it and continued on into the room to see Ike Man. When they get in there, they get to tell the Ike Man, like, look, we know she was up here seeing you. We also know that this was done in retaliation behind you. From what we gathered from her family, you supposed to be into it real bad with some dudes from off of Lafayette and Port Street. Now, if you got some names, you need to tell us because obviously they plan for keeps. I mean, come on, man. You done lost your little brother. You done lost your baby mother. What's it going to take for you to understand you fighting a losing battle? I your man just shook his head like, man, I don't know what you're talking about or what her family talking about. He wiped the tears from his eyes. He told the detectives, just let me grieve in peace, man. 
Just let me grieve in peace.